everybody is having a great day. I am so happy it's Friday. <laughs> very, very much happy. Let's see. Let me check the chat real quick. Let me know if you hear me. I think I have everything set up right, but I always like to double check. So hi, Delia. Hi, Tina. Hi, Stacy, Patricia, Betty, and Star. I hope y'all are all doing well. Thank you so much for joining me. So hi, my name is Carly Bell, and I like to get together with y'all live here on my YouTube channel and Facebook page every other Friday night for a live machine embroidery tutorial that we call Sip and Stitch. And I have my cup with me tonight, and I might do something special tonight because I know I've been supposed to make more of these cups. So let's see if, if I can hold myself to that, hold myself accountable. So um, thanks so much for joining me. And let's see, nobody's telling me they can't hear me, so I think we're good. <laughs> All right, so, so excited, so much stuff going on. I'm, I'm just besides myself with everything. Um, first off, what's the first thing I think? Okay, so I'm going to hold myself accountable. Um, tonight, we're going to have a giveaway. And that giveaway is going to include one of these cups, Sip and Stitch, Sublimated Cup, and I've been meaning to make more of these and I haven't. And I got a whole box of, of cups, so we're going to do it. So tonight, giveaway will include that cup. All you have to do to be entered into the giveaway is like, comment, share on tonight's video tonight. Once you do that, it automatically enters you into the giveaway. I, I set it up all before we started, so it should be good. Um, got that. I wrote that down. So I wouldn't forget. <laughs> the other super exciting thing that has happened recently. So if you have watched any of my previous videos, you know that within the past year, I discovered a company called Kimberbell, who they've been around for a long time, but I finally learned of them. And I went down a whole deep rabbit hole of all of their products and love them. And we've done some here for Sip and Stitch products. Well, um, they and their new brand called Me Time reached out to me, um, let's see, it was about maybe a few weeks or a month ago. And I'm so excited. They asked me to be an ambassador for their new brand called Me Time, which stands for Machine Embroidery. And tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central time zone, I will be live again on YouTube and Facebook unboxing the new Bella Box. So put a reminder in your phone, come back tomorrow, 11 a.m., be at lunchtime live, and uh, we're going to go through and unbox that whole box, and it's going to be so much fun. There's so much good stuff in there, so I can't wait to show you all of that. All right, so yay, Yvonne says, happy Friday. So excited for tonight's Sip and Stitch bathing suits, doing bathing suits. I'm so excited. All right, so do 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 other announcements I had. Um, if you are part of my CF Fans membership group, we are going to have our live Zoom class Monday evening at 5:30. Um, and I know it's Memorial Day. If you have plans, no big deal. It's going to get uh, recorded, and you can watch the replay anytime. Um, but we're going to do our monthly private Zoom class Monday 5:30 central time zone. And that is going to be on further diving into stitch artists and how to digitize using stitch artists. And we're going to go over how to digitize fonts and lettering. So if you are a member of that group, check the CF Fans homepage um, for the Zoom link. Now, if you don't are not familiar, CF Fans is my monthly paid for membership group. It's $9 a month. And you get... Um, a free, well, with your paid membership, you get a private Zoom class with me every month. 
um, either we do a project or lately we've been um, focusing on how to use Stitch Artist um, embroidery software to digitize. And you also get an embroidery design that I digitize every month with your membership. And um, even if you join now, we have something called a vault where you could go back and watch previous month's classes and see previous month's design downloads. So it's really nice. Um, and for the giveaway tonight, not only will we do a cup, but I'll do a free month of the CF fans membership group for the winner tonight. Okay. All right. So that was my announcement. Okay. I got a couple more. <laughs> um, is Memorial Day weekend. I hope y'all are doing more fun things than I'm doing because I'm, to me, it's fun, but to no one else, this would be fun, but I'm cleaning out my house <laughs> because I am rearranging the rooms and we're moving my craft room to another room. And we're, my girls currently share that room and now they will each have their own room. So playing Ring Around the Rosie with the rooms, which involves cleaning everything out moving the girls um, into a, a temporary setup just so that we could start painting and change the floors and all that stuff. So that's what I'll be doing this weekend. If anyone wants to come help me, come on down to New Orleans. It'll be fun. <laughs> um, so I had a point to that. Uh, oh, Memorial Day. Uh, Racoma um, has a Memorial Day sale on all of their... Uh, multi-needle embroidery machines. They have sales on even their printing, um, uh, white toner printer and direct to garment printer on their heat presses on everything. So if you are interested in any of that, I have a referral link for Racoma. I don't know if I linked it down below, but it is, um, on, I don't know where it is. It's somewhere. Anyway, uh, contact Racoma if you are interested in learning about their sale this weekend. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you about was Hoop Fest. Sewing Machines Plus is having their virtual embroidery event that's totally free. It's a week long in June. And when is it? I want to say it starts the 14th. Uh, the 13th. Monday, June 13th is when it starts every day from like 8 to 5. Um, they are having... Uh, product demos and educational classes. And I will be teaching a class on how to applique and I will be doing a persona product demo, uh, machine demonstration. So you can learn more about that machine on Friday the 17th. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And they're having a huge giveaway. You need to go enter for like a dream studio, $25,000 worth of stuff that we need. We all need. <laughs> I've heard some people that want it in the past had to like add on to their house to make room for all the stuff that they got. It's insane. All right. So sorry. I've been missing all the comments. Let me catch up real quick. Oh, Anne says she'll be working in her veggie garden. That sounds very peaceful. I unfortunately kill everything that is a plant that comes near me. So I can't. <laughs> but one day maybe I can. I had aspirations to like me and the girls to make a veggie garden in the backyard. Maybe it'll happen one day. Um, thank you, Michelle. I got my cut a while back. Thank you. Um, all right. Yay, Karen says she can't wait for Hoop Fest June 13th through 17th, right? All right. Yes, Kim, don't forget about the Zoom classes. I put the link for the Zoom class in the... CF Fans Facebook group and on the homepage. Delinda said she is working Memorial Day. I am also working Memorial Day. So I know that that sucks. Um, all right. So, okay. I think that was all my stuff. Thank you for bearing with me through all of that. Now, what are we doing tonight? Tonight we are embroidering. We're going over how to monogram a bathing suit. And specifically, we're doing the cutest little tiny baby girl bathing suit. So this is what we're working on tonight. Um, I did, I bought two bathing suits. I bought a black stripey one and I bought a pink stripey one. So the pink stripey one's the one we're going to stitch tonight. I also had some, I'm terrible. I had bathing, a bathing suit. I should have pulled it out before we started, but I don't know where it is now. 
seersucker. Seersucker children's bathing suits are super popular. Um, I bought some for either Abigail or Elise when they were little. And now they're like way too big to wear what I, what I bought them. So I'm waiting for a three or four year old to come along in my family or friends that I can embroider that for. But my friend Kelsey's little girl is turning two um, and her name is Cecilia, but we call her Cece. And I wanted to look for some other styles of bathing suits. So I got these off of Amazon and I have the link for them down below. So it's a two piece. It has a top with a little ruffle. And then the bottom, I think, is a little on the generous side to have room for a diaper. So I hope they fit her good. Um, but that is what we're making tonight. And I have links in the description box for the ones I got here off of Amazon and for Blank's Boutique if you like the seersucker look. And I'm sure they have lots of places that sell the seersucker ones. I just, I know Blank's Boutique because I've ordered them before. I just don't know where they are right now. Um, so this is the project we're working on tonight. Now, if you are new here, I have several different kinds of embroidery machines and I like to rotate them as we do these sip and stitch classes and use a different machine every time. However, the project I'm doing tonight can be done on any embroidery machine as small as a four by four hoop, okay? I am going to be using my Persona, which is right here. It's a brother Persona. It is a single needle machine, but it has a free arm, which makes it excellent for embroidering tiny things like children's clothing. That was the, the main reason why I bought it. But I just want to emphasize that this can be done on any machine. And I'm going to show you how I do it on my persona. But when we're hooping, I'm going to show you how to hoop it in a regular four by four flatbed hoop, which is your, your typical um, machine like a PE 800 or even a um, SE, what do they have now? SE 625 the smaller brother sewing embroidery machines. I'm going to show you how to hoop it on here, okay? All right, the other thing we are going to go over tonight is how to make a monogram and specifically how to do it in, in Brilliance. You have a couple options, and um, it's super duper easy to do. All right, so with that, let's talk about supplies real quick. So this is a stretchy material. So you want, there's a couple of things to it. It needs to be nice and secure, but you don't necessarily want to put it in between two pieces of a hoop because then it stretches it too much and it can leave marks in the bathing suit. So we're going to do something called floating. But to keep it secure and stuck and not go anywhere, we're going to use sticky stabilizer. And we're using sticky tearaway. So I'm going to show you how to use that tonight. So bathing suit, sticky tearaway stabilizer, um, your hoop. I have some tools that I use all the time, like my um, disappearing ink fabric marker. I like to use the grid that comes with the hoop um, to use for placement and a ruler. And, oh, I did forget to get out water, soluble, topper. I don't remember if I put that on the supply list either. Um, for all the supplies that I'm using, check out the Sip and Stitch homepage. That is my website, carlybell.com. You can either go to the menu at the top and click Sip and Stitch, or you can add it on to the, to the URL there, Sip and Stitch. That is going to have links to all the supplies that I'm using tonight, you know, scissors, markers, rulers, stabilizers, all the things, okay? And hi, Wendy. All right. Am I forgetting anything? I think that's it. And um, this is a super easy project. We It's one thread color, one stitch out. There's nothing um, you have to change or do or anything. It's just one thread color, and it's going to stitch all in. Okay. So let's go to, oh, there's Kelsey. She's on call all weekend. At least I'm not the only one working the holiday. Nope, I'm working. Um, Chris is working late tonight. He is working till 9 o'clock tonight. And then Saturday and Sunday is going to be spent cleaning out the upstairs of my house. And Monday I got to go to work. But the kids are off of school. 
So I thought it'd be a good, that's why I'm doing the, the, um, the fans class on Monday night, because I don't have to deal with after school. I don't have any after school activities and there's no homework and none of that. All right. Oh, Kim, you're having trouble with your Recoma? Send me a message. I will help you. I will definitely help you. I know it is a learning curve, especially coming from a small machine and going to a big machine. It is a learning curve. But once you get it, you're good. So just um, message me on Facebook or you can email me. Where's my email? I have an email. There we go. Email me there and I will help you. I'd be happy to help. All right. Now, what am I doing? I am going to Embrilliance. Let's go to Embrilliance and let's go over how to do a monogram. Okay, so y'all should all see my Embrilliance screen right now. And the font I'm using tonight is from Creative Appliques and it is called, what is it called? Elegant Circle. Let me click on it, yeah. Creative Applique Elegant Circle Monogram. It comes in sizes 1 inch to 3.5 inches. I think she also has another one that's large if you want it like bigger to put on bags or something like that. But for what I'm doing, I think I'm using the 3 inch, yes, tonight. Now, I've manipulated this a little bit, so let's start over. So I'm going to go to a new one. I'm in Embrilliance Essentials. Uh, but I want to tell you a little something in case um, you don't have Embrilliance yet and you're kind of on the fence about it. They have a free program. Well, they got two free programs. But the one that you want to get for this project is called Embrilliance Express. And you, uh, I think I have a link for it somewhere. I'll put it in the, um, in the chat in a little while. But it's a free download. However, the program is only going to let you do uh, fonts, but it has to be what's called a BX file. And that is usually whenever you buy fonts, it comes in multiple formats. And BX is usually one of them. And that you can install into the program. And then you can do this and pick your font. And it will change um, the lettering to the font and you can save it. The other free program that Embrilliance has is a demo version that lets you try out all their features of all their programs, but the caveat is, is you can't save anything and stitch it out. With Embrilliance Express, that free version, you can only do BX fonts. You can save those and stitch them out and that's it. Now, if you try to add a design or applique or anything to it, it won't save. It only will work with BX fonts. So tonight's project would work with it. Um, but what, what we're going to do, so let me start over. All right. So the first thing we do is we press this A icon up here. It says create a lettering design and it always starts with ABC and all of the BX fonts I have on my computer are on, are in here and you could, I could just scroll and look for them. Every time I install one, it goes, it goes here. So usually when you start it, this is the default. This is a font that comes with the program. Now, I'm doing a monogram. Now, monograms usually follow the format of first name initial, last name initial, then middle name initial. And that last name that's in the middle is bigger, usually. It's, it's more pronounced in some sort of way. So, for instance, our baby girl, Cecilia. Her first name starts with a C. So I'll put a C there in the text box right here. Her last name is Pace with a P. And her middle name is Elise, just like my daughter. All right. So that is her monogram. However, this isn't a monogram font, so it doesn't look right. So now I'm going to choose my monogram font, which is right here. The elegant circle and I picked three inch. Now I have a four by four hoop on this screen right now because that's that's what I'm that's the area I'm stitching in tonight and you see this uh, box here is red because my design is bigger than my hoop it's warning me this is not good you're not gonna be able to stitch it out it's too big so the way 
I fix that is I like the spacing between the letters to be a little bit closer. So you have a couple options. You can click an individual letter and use the um, arrows on your keyboard to move them left and right or up and down, whatever you want. Um, I could do that over here. Or, and Brilliance has some options here where you can slant the font. Let me do that. Okay, or you can mess with spacing. However, the thing I find with monogram fonts, it's moving the P and the E, but it doesn't move the C. So usually with monogram fonts, I will just manually move it. So I'm looking at the space between the P and the top of the E right here. And now I'm going to click this one. Oops, I didn't want to go down. Um, and I just kind of eyeball it. Like, because this is close to the P here. I don't know, maybe it can go over one more. It depends on the look that you're going for. How close you want it to be. I'm going to go back. All right, I think I like that. But now you see it's not in the middle of my hoop at all. It's off to the side and it's, it's right on the line, which would make me nervous. I want it to be centered. So I'm going to select it. Everything's selected. And I'm going to press this button here called Center Designs in the Hoop. And you see now it moved it right to the middle of the hoop. And to me, everything looks right. I can click and see all the letters are aligned in the middle correctly. And I think I like my spacing. I think all that looks good. And then I know it's in the center of my hoop. So with this, I would be done. I would go to File, Save Stitch File As, and then save it to a USB stick in the format that um, your machine uses. So I have Brother. The machine I'm working on tonight is a Brother, so I'm going to save it as a PES file. Baby Lock is the same thing. My Recomus is a DST. And I think, like, Janome is J. E, F, but don't quote me on that. The other machines I can't remember, but save it as the format that your machine uses, okay? So, let's see, I can minimize that now. So now let's look at all our stuff tonight. All right, so we've got our monogram. We have it saved to our USB stick and we are ready it's all you know put it on the machine now we're ready to hoop and everything so i am using my persona this is a really cool um set of hoops or frames that you can get to go with free arm machines like the persona um you can get these for a six needle and a ten needle as well um, they're called Durky easy frames and essentially instead of it being a traditional hoop where you got two pieces and you put something in between it is just a frame it's just a single piece and most commonly I use sticky tearaway on it and you see I stick it to the bottom of of the frame and then I float things on top so with these are usually floating everything or sometimes I clip it to the frame sometimes I clip stabilizer to the frame it's just up to you and your preference. I know I've pretty much ruined mine with all the, the stickiness I've put on it, but I've, I've accepted it and I've moved on. <laughs> Some people are very particular and don't want all this stickiness on their frames. Now, I stitched this the other day and then I ripped it off. So I have a little, I have stabilizer here, but I have a hole in the middle. I like to save stabilizer and you can see I did this already. You see how I patched it once? I'll usually patch it two times right so i've used it three times the first time the second time now this will be the third time so i'm just going to cut a piece of stabilizer that's going to cover that hole like this and i try to pull it so I try to make it a little taunt, 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 tight, like that. And I'm going to turn it over and then I'm going to press it real good. So 
Now I have saved myself some stabilizer. Now, also, what I would do is on the easy frame, they have these little notches here. I will use a ruler and mark some crosshairs on there so I know where the center is, and that's going to help me with my placement after. Okay, so I put some marks there. Now I'm done with this for now. And don't worry, I'm going to go back to that traditional 4x4 four four hoop. So now I have my bathing suit. I guess we can cut off the tag now. Can't, can't bring it back after I stitch it. <laughs> All right, so this is the bathing suit. And I'm just going to try and lay it flat the best I can. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to find the center and where I want my design to be. And to do that, now I don't have a grid that came with this, but I do have a grid, where'd it go? That came with my four by four hoop for my PE 770. So that's what I'm using as a marker. And if you don't have one of these grids, if you if you if your machine didn't come with any grids in the hoops, just, just use your ruler and figure out where you want to be. And, or you can always go in in Brilliance and print out the design on a piece of paper. It will print true to size. You can cut it out the piece of paper and lay it on the shirt to see like right where um, you think the design would be. This will help you a lot if you're not confident in your sizing. Like if you made the monogram way too big, you cut it out, you come here and you put it and you realize, oh, no, that's way too big for this bathing suit. Or you made it way too small. That also that helps a lot with um, with visualizing how the design will look on the item that you are embroidering. I'm trying to see. I usually have like little stitch outs on pieces of cutaway that Elise plays with. But I don't know where it is. Never mind. I was going to show you an example. So for me, since I have my grid, I'm going to just put my grid here and I'm going to eyeball where I think the design should go. Now for me, I can put this line right there and you see the bottom stitching of this bathing suit. They have a line here. I can make this line parallel with that. So now I know I'm not crooked. Okay, because sometimes you, especially with, with a uh, fabric that has stripes, those stripes not might not be spot on. On this one though, it does look like it. It goes right with it. Um, but see over here, it doesn't. Now I'm gonna take a ruler and make sure I'm in the center. So that's where I was trying to get this to lay nice and flat so I could figure out the center. because this seam over here just keeps wanting to come up. Okay, so we're about nine and a half. So that would be four and a quarter. No, four and three quarters, right? All right, so I think that is my center. And I'm just gonna look at it and make sure I like it. I can also measure from here to this arm. It's about one and see over here. It's not, so I might push it over a little. Okay. I think that looks good. When you get it where you want it, then use your um, disappearing ink fabric marker and the link for this is on the sip and stitch homepage that I showed you earlier all right so I, they have little holes cut out in this grid and that's where I put my marker through so I don't know if you could see those marks and now I'm gonna use those marks to uh, draw some crosshairs All right, 
right so now I have that now I don't I don't I've never had any trouble with these I know some people use friction pens I've never used those before this disappears with air and then it really disappears with water and then if I'm in a rush and I'm like I'm stitching this out right before a birthday party and I need it to go away immediately before I give it to someone I use a tide pen when I'm done and it gets it off immediately so that is my marker now before we jump back to the easy frame that we we set up already I want to quickly show for those of you that have what I'd call a flatbed machine um, with a four by four hoop so I would cut a piece of sticky tear away slightly bigger than your hoop like that and you want the textured paper feeling side down and the glossy side up and hoop it I gotta loosen my hoop up okay and my hoop is very dirty please excuse it all right, so we have the stabilizer hooped. Now take a pin, like a, a sewing pin, and, and take it and score it around the edge of the inside edge of the hoop. All right, then I usually just try to pull it up. You can also do like an X in the middle to help you, but it usually works. And that now I'm pulling off the, that glossy paper. And now this is sticky. Okay. Then for this particular hoop, I am going to put my grid back in it like this. and do the marks, Wait, let me do the purple side you see better. The marks inside of it just like I did on the bathing suit, just like that. Okay, now you have your hoop with your sticky tear away and you have your bathing suit marked and your hoop marked. Now this is where I would kind of turn it inside out and so that just this part is laying and I would eyeball putting this right on top of the marks that are on there and see I could see the little marks through the back of the bathing suit. I'm gonna put my thumbs there and I'm going to try and line them up right on there. Now, the trick with the bathing suit, though, is that you don't want to stretch it, right? It's very stretchy material. You want it to kind of lay. And also, for anyone doing um, bigger kid, once you stitch it, that material is not going to stretch. So you don't want your monogram now with little kids. They're usually not needing to stretch the bathing suit too much to put it on um, but if you're doing a bigger kid keep the monogram small because that area the of the bathing suit is not going to stretch where the stitching is right for example I mean it's it's going to stretch on the sides but where the where the letters are in the middle is not stretching okay so there you are. You have it floated. This stuff is really nice and sticky. It really helps keep the bathing suit right where it needs to be. So the last step for you, if you're doing a flatbed machine and you have it hooped, is to lay a piece of water-soluble topping on top of this and then go stitch it out. Okay? So I just wanted to show that example of how to hoop it in a traditional 4x4 four four hoop if you're not working with a free arm machine like I'm doing tonight. But every other step is the same. You just put it on and you, and you stitch it. 
So I'm using my free arm machine. So I have this. Look, my lines already disappeared. Where's my marker? I lose everything. You can kind of see where it was. Okay, not the straightest line. But there's my mark on there. And I got my bathing suit back. See, my lines are starting to disappear on here a little bit. Now, with this, I'm going to put it on upside down because this has to attach to my machine. So I don't want this to be in the way. So I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to put it upside down. And same thing. I am carefully putting the bathing suit right on the lines that are on the stabilizer. Making sure everything is straight and not really stretching the bathing suit. Okay, so that is there. And now because it's a free arm machine, this could go underneath, right? This is gonna hang below while it's gonna stitch and none of this is going to be in your way. It's going to be hanging below. Okay. So that is done. But we need the water soluble topper. And what I did last time to make it easy was I cut a big piece and I used wonder clips and just clipped it to the frame. It makes you use a bigger piece than what you really need, though. So if you want to use a smaller piece, you could do that and then use, like, embroidery tape um, to hold it in place. But I'm going to do this. And where are my clips? Okay, so we are all ready to go to the machine now. Now this, this, the hard part's done. All that's left now is stitching. So this is what's called the frame adapter. And these two pieces slide on here. You want to make sure they're pushed in all the way. And then you tighten these. And now this, the brackets here, clip on your machine. So let's go over to the machine now. Before I move on, are there any questions? I'm sorry I haven't been able to keep an eye on the chat. I saw Tina and um, Delia talking about giant hoops. <laughs> Tina said a 10 and, 10 and 5 eighths by 16. That is humongous. My biggest hoop I have is on my Baby Lock Altair and it's Nine and a half by 14. Let's see. All right, so any questions before we move on to the stitching part? Any questions about hooping, the sticky tearaway, um, the flatbed versus free arm, any of that stuff? All right, great. Pauline said, very clear. Thank you, thank you. All right, so now, let's see. Oh, here we go. Carrie um, said, what are the hoops that I'm using? So the this bluish hoop that I showed you here, this is called a Durky Easy Frame. And the frame I'm using on it is five inches by four inches. But when you buy it, it comes with several sizes. And I have all mine down here. These are all the frames that attach to this. So you just choose the one that is the appropriate size. Um, the largest is going to be eight by eight because that is the largest area that this machine can stitch. But I think that's the case even if you buy this for like a six needle or a ten needle machine. I think these frames are only made to... to um, to embroider up to eight by eight. It's it's really made uh, helpful for small things and um, like 
onesies and things with pockets and bags and things that you want to float. Um, that's what makes these great. So this clips onto the machine like this. All right. And you can see the arm, see that's where the bobbin is, is here. So the bathing suit is not going to get stitched to itself and it hangs below and out of the way. This is why I upgraded from my PE770 or P it's the same as PE800 to this machine. It's for this right here because after you stitch so many kids shirts and you're constantly like getting the material out of the way or onesies or bags and you you know the struggle is real <laughs> this is why i bought this machine right here um so it makes everything so much easier when you have this free arm but this is still a single needle machine so get what is best for you. Um, the six and the 10 needle machines have this as well. Now my machine is turned on and ready to go. I already uploaded my um, monogram. I don't know how well you can see, but my monogram is right side up. My bathing suit is upside down. So I need to rotate it. So there's a button here it says rotate and I can turn it now it's sideways and now it's upside down so when it stitches it will look right so now I'm gonna hit okay and embroider all right now let me back it up again now do you see my red dot here this is showing me the center of the Come closer. The center of the where the needle is. This dot should be in the center of your design, but the center of my design is back here. So I need to move this. So we have arrows um, right here to move it. So that's what I'm going to be messing with. And I'm just going to hit that arrow until that laser is right in the center of where I made my purple crosshairs, right? So I know my design is going to stitch where it should. Now, whenever you're using these frames, the machine does not know what size you have on. Because this is on here, it automatically thinks you have an eight by eight hoop on. We don't, right? And we don't want our needle to hit this metal frame on accident. So every single time before I embroider anything, I always trace to see right where the design is going to fall to make sure my needle does not get close to these metal frames. So the trace button is here. It looks like a dashed line uh, into a square with an arrow. So I'm going to click that and it's going to move. And I'm just going to follow that red laser light and I can see it's not going anywhere near my frame my frame is way back here yeah so this monogram I think is going to turn out to be larger than the previous one I did but I think it's going to be good because this stripe um it's busy so the monogram needs to be bolder I think to see it good so with that said we are ready to stitch we have it loaded on the design is in the right orientation because I have my bathing suit upside down I've traced it. I make sure that the stitching is not going to go where it's not supposed to. Um, I am using this blue thread. I think this will be a nice contrast on the pink. So the monogram is going to be in this bright um, aqua blue. So now I'm just going to hit lock. My thread is loaded and ready and go. So now it is going to start stitching. Norma's checking on me. Yes, Norma, I did oil the bobbin case. I, um, every time I, before I turn my machine on, I take the bobbin out. I clean the bobbin area. I, what's called, I oil what's called the hook, which is was something brand new to me. When I had a flatbed machine, you don't oil anything. 
when you have a free arm machine, you oil it every time you use it. Um, and then I turn my machine on. That's like my um, routine. When every time I use my Prasana and my Rakoma, I oil the um, the, the bobbin and hook. Yeah, Ann says she uses her Prasana for onesies and hats. Yeah, so this machine also can embroider hats. Um, if you look on the side over here, I have this is my contraption for hooping hats and the hat, the um, the cap ring that you put that on the machine. So, and we did a sip and stitch on that earlier this year. If you want to go back and look how to embroider a hat on this machine. Um, all right. Sorry about that, Beth. Yeah, I forgot about the comment being there. Um, all right. So this one looks like it's going to be a lot bolder than this one was. I think it's just going to be bigger. Because this one, like when I look at it, it looks good. But when I look at it in a picture or the video, it looks very busy. And I use a fluorescent pink on there. Um, but from far away, I guess the stripes still make it look busy. Now, this is a vine monogram. I got this font from Itch to Stitch. And I have the link for it on the Sip and Stitch homepage. But I wanted to do something different for the other monogram. And this one is the Elegant Circle from Creative Applique. And Dawn at Creative Applique, she has um, a good sale on her website where, what was it? If you spend $12, you get it. Everything on, on her website like already is on sale. But when you put $12 in your cart, you get an extra 20% off. And she gives you a free font. Uh, along with your purchase. So when you get something, make it go to 12 so that you get the free font and you get the extra discount. Uh, Kim asked for my email. Yes, ma'am. This is my email. Hello at carlybell.com. If you have any questions, feel free. I might not get back to you right away, but I promise I will <laughs> eventually. All right. Um, yay, Pam says she loves the hat. Who's the better if I actually learned how to use it for me? I'm glad I could help you, Pam. Um, oh, I forgot all about that, Krissa. Designs by Juju actually purchased the It's, it's to Stitch website. I forgot all about that. But I don't know if um, the website, the itch, I checked it. The website is still up, the Itch to Stitch website. Um, but, yeah, is she moving all of their designs over to her website? I don't know. But I forgot all about that. Um, okay, so Michelle asks is a really good question. Do you ever use a monogram that came with the machine or does it come with one? The persona, I'll show you when we're done. No, none of the brother and baby lock machines I've had or have seen come with anything like these monogram fonts. They will come with fonts and you can try to create a monogram by making like the middle letter larger and then the two side letters smaller, but they're not going to fit together. They're going to be, you know, traditionally block or cursive. Um, what I like about the monograms like from creative appliques and it's just stitch is that they flow within to one another and they, they the letters are, are shaped um to to go together um and you won't get that on your machine uh by itself but you can you can try to create something now my persona came with a beautiful alphabet that's just like large big one letters and they like have flowers and and stuff on them so if you just want to do a one letter initial the, the persona came with a really pretty one. I'll show you when we're done. Okay, so Kathy said, what was the company with the font? So the one I'm using right now is Creative Appliques. 
and I have a link for it down in the description. The Vine one on my other bathing suit is from the Itch to Stitch. I have a link to that one on the Sip and Stitch homepage. Yes, Cindy Hogan and Jerry Granada are awesome teachers. Awesome, awesome. I love them. Every time they're on Sewing Machines Plus, I watch them. They're going to be on for Hoop Fest, too. All right, so this looks like it's coming together really nice. Um, another thing that's nice about the Persona compared to my old machine is it stitches a lot faster. So where am I? I'm at 1,000 stitches per minute right now. My old PE770 can only go to 6, 650. But this stitch is a lot faster. And that makes a difference when you're making things, especially with satin stitching. Satin stitching takes so long. The quicker you could stitch that, the better. It hasn't started yet. <laughs> My quilting has not started yet. I really am focused on this renovation that I'm doing in, in the upstairs of my house and moving my craft room around that the only time, literally the only time I'm in my craft room is when I'm live with y'all. With the exception of, what was that? Um, was it? Monday or Tuesday evening, I came and stitched the black bathing suit to have a, um, a test run. And I like to have something to take pictures of before we go live so I could show you what we're making ahead of time. But th that's the only time I've been in my craft room. And when I'm, um, when I'm not with y'all, I am either working with the kids, dancing school, or trying to clean out um, my entire house. <laughs> but I'm hoping after the um we moved the craft room to the new room and i'm adding a bunch of new storage i made a huge ikea order today that i will have the time and the space to really get started on my quilting and I actually i had a question uh, terry um osborne made a great suggestion for me with designing my new room and that was to have some wall space to be able to put blocks up when you're creating a quilt so you can visualize it. So I'm incorporating that into the room too. All right. Yes, I will start quilting when I start doing my Kimberbell projects, right? <laughs> Actually, one of the new um, subscriptions, like because the, Be the Bella Box, you know, we're familiar with, I've gotten the Bella Box before. I got it last year. Um, they have a new box coming out and it's called Perfectly Pieced. And I should be getting that this month. And I'm gonna do a video on it and I'm gonna show you how to use it. And we're gonna quilt something in the hoop for that box so I can show you what it's like. So I'm hoping my room will be done by then though. We'll see. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, Aunt Blair. Where's um where's Ann? I just saw Ann's comment and then it went away. Yes, Ann said that she loves that it cuts jump stitches. That is another reason. There are so many reasons why I bought this machine. Um, when I, I went from having my small five by seven flatbed machine, the free arm was huge. Cutting jump stitches was beautiful. And I have a much bigger hoop because before I only had five by seven and now I had eight by eight. So that was a huge improvement for me. Um, and then from here, I went up to my Racoma 10 needle, which has all the needles. Um, and then it, the hoop goes up to eight by 12. So this was a wonderful step up from the PE 770 and, um, and was that nice middle of the road price if you're not ready for a multi-needle and the multi-needle price. <laughs> All right. Yes, Karen, a design wall. That's what I'm gonna try and have. 
Okay. Um, Chris has said, let's see. Oh, wait, no, I'm trying. I'm clicking on things and they're going away. All right. Um, she took, Krista took a road trip to Ikea last week, hopefully putting together at least one piece this weekend. <laughs> Yay. I'm glad you're doing your studio too. Yeah. There's going to be a mess everywhere. I'm, I'm preparing myself for that. All right. Ooh, here we go. Jody asks a great question. How would you do a hyphenated name? I will show you because Dawn has one. Um, let me find it on her website and then I can share it. Okay, so wait, let me share. Um, okay. So this is Dawn's website, Creative Appliques. This is where my font is from. So we could go to fonts, monogram fonts. She has four letter monogram fonts. How cool is that? So if you have a hyphenated name or some kids have two middle names, you can still do monograms for them. So these are big um, circle appliques. This is what, this one's small and this one's large. So pay attention to that because some of her designs are split by size. So this is um, three inches to seven inches and that's going to be, you know, the, the width and the height. And then these are eight to 12 inches. Um, she had other four letter ones too, I think. Oh, look, these are pretty. These are sketch filled, but they have a gradient to them. So they go from light to like more dense like an ombre, I guess you would call. And look, these are separated by size. And I think she had, this is the one we're doing tonight. Yeah, these are a basic satin circle. And that's the four is there. I have I have these two font, uh, monogram fonts too. I almost used, but I, I wasn't quite sure it was gonna look good on the bathing suit. I have this one, the honeycomb one is really pretty. And I love this one. The, um, the beaded um, circle. This one's super cute, but it looks best on something that's solid. I don't think it would look good on the stripe. But yeah, check out her website. See, it's already on sale. And then where's it at? Maybe at the top. When you, here we go, you spend um, $12, you get an extra 20% off and you get this free font over here. Look how cute that is. All right. How do I stop sharing? Doop. Now where am I? I'm back on the machine. Okay. Um. Okay, Delia says there's a portable design wall. So I guess something you fold up and can put away. I was thinking I'm just gonna have a blank wall and then, um, I don't know if I'll put cork board up on it or maybe even just like put a large, I don't know if I could buy like a huge piece of felt so that I can just pin stuff to it when I want, something like that. All right, let's get this off the machine so y'all can see what it looks like. So we're just gonna slide this off go let's go back over to the craft table and here we go how cute is that I love it this one's a lot bolder and I guess just the black is just really busy um so no matter what color you use it's um it's hard but this I love this I love okay so first thing I'm gonna do is unscrew this Oops, then I'm going to plug in my iron. So I'm going to get this adapter out of the way. We got that. I'm going to plug in my iron. Because I did a test, but we're going to have to wait till the bathing suit gets washed to really, I have to get back to you on it. All right. Um, let me put my iron up too. Okay. Take my clips off. All right. Now this is the water soluble topper. It just tears away. And it should be to where you could just pick it all out with your fingers or I love my tweezers. I have to go find them though. They're on my other machine. Did 
did not know how much I needed tweezers until my my Ricoma came with them in the toolbox, and now I can't live without them. It's like, how did I live with them before? Well, live without it before. I love my tweezers. They help so much with like little things like this. So, and if you're worried, you can just um, wet. You know, we're gonna wet it and get any extra off. All right, I think that's good. Now, because this is tear away, this is going to. Um, tear right off. See that? Especially when you have a satin stitch, it, it like, it almost like cuts it so cleanly. And because this is my last patching of this. I'm going to take all of this off. Okay. So that is out. That is done. And this is what we're looking at on the inside. Now you can pull away the tear away in between the letters. When I'm doing shirts, I don't necessarily do this, but maybe it would be better with a bathing suit just because the material is so thin. Now, my big question with this, and especially since this is for a little baby girl, with all of my children's stuff, I always put what most, most of us call tender touch. The one I'm using is called, what is it called? Fuse So Soft. This is it. Fuse So Soft. Um, this is a fusible cover-up that you use on the back of stitching so that it doesn't rub against the baby's skin. Um, now, bathing suits are not one that you would, something that you would usually iron. However, I did do a test with this bathing suit and it ironed fine. Okay. My only question is, will, how will it hold up to washing? And so I'm going to get Kelsey to tell me how it does after washing. But usually people have trouble with these and that's when they put it in the dryer. I don't put bathing suits in the dryer. So I'm thinking just washing, this is going to stay on fine. And if it does come off a little bit, you can just lightly iron it back into place. But this is going to cover up that stitching. Okay, I use alcohol to get the sticky off my fast frames. Beth, yes, I need to clean my fast frames really bad. <laughs> um. Ooh, Beth says if you use heat and bond light and then do the tender touch, it works better. Cause, yeah, because it's what it is is that it's the adhesive of the tender touch is not that strong, but heat and bond adhesive is strong. Okay, that's an idea. That's something I need to test out. Thank you for that tip, Beth. All right, Tina says she would like to purchase a set of easy frames with a persona. Should I wait for Hoop Fest next month and see if they offer a better bundle deal? I don't know, Tina. I think the guy from Durkee is going to be on there. Sometimes they do. Um, you could call and ask. And I actually, I wanted to tell you all that. So I've been partnering with Sewing Machines Plus for like a year and a half now. I love them. They're a really great company. Um, and I previously, I, you know, I have links like my referral links whenever, um, I show you like the machine or like my stabilizer and stuff like that, um, is a referral, but I know a lot of people like to call in and talk to somebody on the phone and ask questions and, um, 
And sometimes the people on the phone could get you a better deal on pricing. And, um, and they also help with financing, which are all things, you know, I can't necessarily do. And especially you can't do when you're ordering online. So I have a direct contact now at Sewing Machines Plus. And her name is Jean and she's super nice. And you would call Sewing Machines Plus's normal website and her extension is 139. And just tell her that Carly Bell referred you and she can help you with everything and she can help you to get the best pricing. So what I would do is I would call her and ask her if she knows if they're going to have any deals on the Dirty Easy Frames um, for uh, Hoop Fest and she could tell you whether or not. Now also she ha I have a coupon code that she can use for whatever you buy um, by telling her that I referred you. So you'll get a discount um, on the, on the frames right there as well. So give her a call and, um, and see what she says. All right. Okay. Michelle said, what's better, Durkey or fast frame? I personally think the Durkey is better. I don't know the price of the fast frames. The reason why I like the Durkeys better is they're they're very thick and sturdy like um the fast frames are super thin and i find flimsy these are, are more st sturdy and hold your project better um whereas the the fast frames i find are more flimsy i i like the jerkies better all right let's see Okay, so I was doing that. That is done. Let's see, before I iron. So now let's look at the front. And I still see a little bit of um, my lines from my mark. So I'm going to go ahead and, and get those off of there. Water will work, but I find like, it doesn't matter since this is a bathing suit, but when I'm doing a shirt, like I have to soak it to get it to come off. And this is like you barely need any and it comes right off, right off. All right. And now let me move some stuff. All right, this is my ironing mat, my little mini iron. And I have it to where I'm just ironing the front, not like this where it like goes through, just because I was worried I, I might mess it up because I, I know this material is not meant for heat. Uh, where it is, here's my piece so soft. And all, this, all the stabilizers that I use, they come from Sewing Machines Plus, and I love them. I love that they come in a tube. I have them all underneath my persona, and they have labels on them. And they, um, I can have them all facing with the labels up, and I know right where everything is. They also, I also have a bunch of their, like, pre-cut. So that sticky tearaway I used earlier that was a pre-cut sheet it comes in like a really big uh, ziploc bag um so that you don't have to worry about cutting stabilizer all the time when you're using it for like certain hoop sizes I'm going to cut this down and then with the other one I forgot to round the corners so I'm going to do that with this one and be careful not to cut the bathing suit itself I'm just kind of cutting it to fit. Okay. So now that is done. And then my little mini iron. And I just put Oops, you have to put like a little bit of pressure, but then
not too much. It like it shrinks the more you press it, so you gotta be careful. I probably got my iron too hot. Okay, I think that's good. So I will get back to you next time once I hear from Cecilia's mom on how that holds up in the wash. So I can see this, this design was um, bigger and a little more dense than the other one I did. And I find I see some puckering on this one that I didn't see on the other one. And that might be why. Because my other one, I didn't get any puckering at all. It was nice and smooth. And I did the same exact process. So this one might be a smidge too big. But it looks good. I like it. I still have some water soluble in there somewhere. I saw it. There it is. All right. Sorry, I'm not looking at the comments. Okay, so um, the Linda, where is it? It's called Fuse So Soft um, from Sewing Machines Plus, and I have the big roll. It's 12 inches by 10 yards. You can also buy it like nine inches tall. Um, and I have a link for it in, where is it? On the Sip and Stitch homepage. You can find it. Yeah, Cindy said she bought a lot of their um, stabilizer, too. It, it is all really good. And I, like I said, I love the tubes. Where is... This is the Sip and Stitch homepage. That is going to have links to all of my supplies, my, my markers, my um, stabilizers, um, the machines, the hoops, um, everything. So let me go back here. I have not had a single sip since we started. This is what happens when I get working. And my friend Amy's not here to tell me to sip. <laughs> my friend Amy was here last week and she was sitting in the corner of, of my desk and she, and I would be working, walking around and she'd come up to me and she'd hand me my cup. <laughs> I need Amy here with me. Yes, Deanna, I like the tubes a lot. So like these are the tubes that they come in and they have um labels on the bottom so like all, the whole shelf on the bottom of my persona is filled with these um tubes with the labels up so i can see exactly what i need and grab it and then i have all my pre-cut sheets um leaning at like in the space on the floor between the wall and the machine and they're all labeled nicely too to where i could see um which uh stabilizer is which but this is my water soluble topper came in this one. I like to get the 12 inch tall ones because they work on almost all of the hoop sizes that I have. Um, when I only had a five by seven hoop, the eight inch or nine inch roll was perfect. But then when I got the bigger machine with the bigger hoop, those didn't work anymore. So the 12 inch is good because then you can use it with any hoop. Okay. Did I forget anything? Yay, Delinda, drink your gold peak iced tea. This is your beverage of choice. Beverage of choice. All right. Uh, yeah, um, I've seen those, like the, the, the thing you put on the back of your door. Um, it can either, I think they make some that's like supposed to be for purses, but you could slide rolls in or you can buy the ones that hold shoes and you could put stabilizer in there too. Um, I want to say Sewing Machines Plus came out with some sort of over-the-door organizer, too. I don't remember. All right. Norma, Monday for CF fans, we're doing a Stitch Artist tutorial, which I know you recently bought Stitch Artist, so you need to play with it and learn how to use it. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So... Now, we're all done. So one more time. Let's take a look. How cute. I really like the pink and the blue. The pink and the blue really stand out. But black and pink is also cute. 
So Miss Cecilia is going to be decked out and ready for the pool this summer with her monogrammed bathing suits. All right. So if you were here at the beginning, I told you we're going to do a giveaway tonight. So let's see. Let me see how I do this. So let's get ready for the giveaway. So if you commented, liked, shared tonight's video at any point tonight, you were automatically entered for the giveaway. And the giveaway tonight is a cup, a sip and stitch cup that you can use now every time you watch with your beverage of choice. And one free month to my CF Fans membership group. And if someone who is already a member wins, I'm going to give you money back on a month. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's figure out how to share the giveaway thing. Okay. So then we can watch it. All right. So we had 68 entries. Ready, set, draw. Gonzalez 56 Mills, you are the winner on YouTube. Yay. All right, let me write that down. So, 56 Mills. All right, so I need you to send me an email at hello at carlybell.com telling me that you won tonight's giveaway. And I'm going to get your mailing address and I'm going to ship you a cup. And then I'm going to get you set up for your one free month of CF fans. So congrats, Gonzalez, 56 mils. I need to know your real name. <laughs> so congratulations. All right, guys. So I think that is it for tonight. That is a record for me. What are we only a little bit over an hour? What else y'all want to make? What else can we do? I have a babysitter right now. Let's 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 get on this. <laughs> what else I got on my table over here? Um, anybody? Oh, tell me who made the notebooks from last week. My kids already stole most of them. Elise is actually hiding one because the one she wants, of course, is the one her sister wants. And um, so Elise is hiding it so her sister won't find it. <laughs> All right. So who who made me? Who made some notebooks? I want to hear about them. How did it go? And I want to see pictures. Um, if you're not already a member of the Facebook group, the Carly Bell Beginner Machine Embroidery Facebook group, come join us. I have a link for it in the description down below. And I love to see pictures of the things that y'all are making. I love to see all of them. All right. Ooh, Beth said, let's do something with the 8x14 uh, flip turkey. I think I'm going, I haven't made anything with that in a while. I need to make something. Who are we? I was talking to somebody about it something the other day that was split and I was like we could it was a, a in the hoop or an applique project and I was like we could split that in there um because typically I was thinking we can only do thread designs in it but there was there was something I was thinking we could do in it I'm gonna to make it but I think I'm gonna demonstrate that during hoop fest um when I do the the persona demo all right all right, Cindy says, show some more about and brilliance. Um, okay, I could do that. Oh, no, Norma says she can't find the notebooks in Los Angeles. We'll have to find an online store for you. I'll look for some online, Norma, and I'll let you know if I find some that are not an arm and a leg because they should be less than a dollar. <laughs> um, yeah, Beth, you're wondering if in the hoop design could be done. We'll have to play around with it. Um, I have a video on how to use it, the the hoop itself. I have a, a detailed tutorial. It's in. So whenever you purchase a persona through my referral at Sewing Machines Plus, so if you order through my online link or if you call Jean, um, my personal contact there, you get access to my persona uh, owner's Facebook group. And it's the Brother Persona and the Baby Lock Alliance. They're the same machine. And in that group, I have a bunch of trainings, training videos showing you how to use the machine. And one of them is the 8x14 hoop. 
but it is only for stitching. So we need to do another tutorial to see what kind of in the hoop applique maybe that we can do with it. Um, so Beth, if you're in that group, it's in the guide section. Now, if you didn't buy your machine through me, but want to see some persona training videos, I have them in the CF fans membership group. Um, and that's in, I have a, a, what's called a vault. It has all of my tutorials and, and downloads and everything in there. You get access to that vault when you are a CF fans member and the persona trainings are in there. Um, Jenny wants to know when the persona event is. I'm going to be demoing the persona on Friday, June 17th. And I want to say it's in the morning, but I don't know what time. You could look on the Sewing Machines Plus website, Hoop Fest, and it gives you a detailed schedule of every day. Yes, Norma, go look at Walgreens for the notebooks. They have them there. Yes, Beth, so come join the CF Fans membership group. I have all the persona stuff in there. All right, Kathy, I think I, think I added you to the vault already. Um, but I will double check. Remind me on Monday. Send me a message on Monday and say, hey, Carly, check the if I'm in the vault, if I, um, if I added you. Okay, so Cindy, was it Cindy? Wanted to know some brilliant stuff. Was it merging designs? I can't remember. Ask me again because I can't find the comment. Um, Kim, yes, uh, Kim's asking about the Rakoma um, training videos. I do have that too. It's the same situation with Rakoma. I have a referral link, and when you buy your machine um, from my referral, I have a Rakoma owners group, and I have training videos in there too. But just let me know if you need help with something. I can help you. All right. Have a good Memorial Day weekend too, Karen. Okay, so Cindy says she's been trying to take quilting design and merge other designs into one. Oh, this is perfect. I'm about to do this with my Kimberbell quilt. Let's go over that real quick. Okie dokie. I didn't buy my Kimberbell um, background quilting designs yet. Oh, no, I have one from something else. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Share screen. Oh, and Brilliance is not there no more. Why is Brilliance not there? There we go. Okay. All right. We're in Brilliance. I'm going to open a new tab. And let's zoom out a little because I think we're going to be bigger than that hoop. Now, you can't see what I'm doing right now, but I am looking in my files for a quilting design. Is this it? It just says bonus. Oh, here it is. Um, sorry, give me a second. I am... Um, I got some background quilting designs with my old, the last year Bella box. And here it is. Okay, I'm gonna open it. Now, okay, so you see that? That is background quilting, but it's too big for this hoop. So let me make the hoop bigger. Um, I'm gonna change it to a five by seven hoop and hit apply. Okay, so we're in a, a five by seven hoop. There we go. And that's background quilting. Um, now, say I want to put an applique on top of this. Let's see. I'm going to just pull from that same. Um, um, the, the Bella box that I have. Um, Let's 
let's see what I have. I think I got some cute appliques. I don't know if you'd want to do wording, but say I wanted to do this pin cushion. Um, so I just dragged and dropped it on there. Um, another option would be go to this button here, merge a stitch file. So you opened your first one. Now you want to add to it. So click merge stitch file. I don't know if you can see the screen. You can't see the screen that um, that popped up. Sorry, but it's like um, a finder window, window explorer so that you can find um, what you're looking for. And I can't get it through here. Oh no, here we go, Dropbox. I keep all my stuff in Dropbox because I've had, so, <laughs> I've had not great luck with um, computers. Well, not that the computers were bad, but I am bad for the computers. And I, I, I tend to have to get new ones or reformat them. So I keep everything on Dropbox or Google Drive or iCloud so that um, I can't lose it on accident. I'm sorry, I am looking for designs. Okay, so say I wanted the pin cushion or how about this one? This is like a sewing machine. And then I have it import. Like once I find the design I want, I press a button that says import and it moves it in. So now this, this design is on top of the background quilting and I'm gonna change the color of the background quilting to white so that, um, let's just do something really light so it's, it's not so um, pronounced. And this sewing machine, I think is applique. Yeah, so that um, this would, the inside of the sewing machine would get covered with fabric and you can take out some of these things if you just wanted the sewing machine on top of the, um, the background quilting. But that's how you, that's how you merge. You first open up the background quilting design, then click this merge a stitch file and go through your files and find what you want to add to it and then merge it and it will go on top and you'll know it because of the order of the stitching. It stitches the background quilting first and then this, or you can check the stitch st simulator, which shows you how this gets stitched out. So now the, the sew machine goes on top of it and then all the little details after it. So does that make sense, Cindy? All right, sorry, I'm going back. Um, Beth said, do you have a, let me stop sharing this. How do I do that? Stop, okay. Um, Beth said, do you have a tubular support? Yes, I do. I got it from Sewing Machines Plus and you need it. You definitely need it. It's this piece right here. Um, and it also comes in handy. Um, so it goes on the, the free arm slides in here. And then this piece pulls out. I don't know if it works with it not on the machine. But um, this piece slides out and it holds that big frame and supports it better. This is also great for um, the Mighty Hoops too. They help support any anything big that's on your machine. This is a great accessory to have. Um, can anyone that has a persona or alliance join the CF fans page? Yes, you can. All right. Good night, Wendy. Yay. Krista said she's doing the spring showers and she signed up for two scoops. My friend, Bethany, um, who I talked a lot about last week, she also did the notebook tutorial with me. She did the five by seven version. She's doing the spring showers quilt now and she's almost done. I haven't even started yet. She's almost done, but she's got videos on it and it's beautiful. It's coming together so nicely. She sent me a picture the other day. I can't wait to start mine. Um, Cindy asked for a birth announcement. I 
don't even think, I, I have not done a birth announcement. That would be a good sip and stitch project. I don't have a file to show you an example, but usually it's, it's pretty straightforward. You buy the design, designed by Juju's has a lot of them. And it basically gives you the format and it'll give you some cutesy little things around it and lines. And you fill in using the lettering tool like we did for the monogram today of putting in the letters and the numbers and all the spaces to fill out the date, the time, how much the baby weighed, how long the baby was, the baby's name. All of that's going to be done with the lettering feature. Um, and that you're going to need the full version of In Brilliance Essentials because you have a design and lettering. So you'll need both for that. Um, but that's a great idea for a sip and stitch project. Let me write that down. Okay, I need one of my friends to have a baby so I can make that for <laughs> Okay. Uh, all right, Star, have a great Memorial Day weekend. Thank you, Truth Seeker. I, the more you play with it, the better you get at it, the software. The more you play, the better you get. Don't, I mean, you can watch all the videos you want which I'm happy to help you in a video and show you things step by step. But if you don't have your computer opened while you're watching the video, like watch it on your phone, have your computer open, have in brilliance open, play with it while you watch the video, then it sticks. Um, Delinda, I have an apple. Um, and okay, she brings up a great point. So I've told you I have a history with computers. Um, I've, all, I've had an apple for over 10 years now. I still have my first apple. It's downstairs. Abigail uses it. Um, when I got into embroidery, I didn't really know about Embrilliance. I heard about Sew It Pro, and that only worked on the PC. So I had an old PC, so I installed Sew It Pro on there, and that was my embroidery computer. All my designs were on it, and Sew It Pro was on it. Well, my bad luck with computers something crashed, I had to reformat the computer back to its original settings. And I lost my program. But when you bought, so I got to install it again. But that was it. No more after that. Well, then the PC died. Okay, it was it was done. It was horrible. I had to get the physical hard drive out of the computer and figure out a way to turn it into a USB plug so that I could get all my embroidery files off of it. Lesson learned. Everything's in a cloud now. Nothing, nothing is on a computer or a hard drive. It's in a cloud. Um, you can back up with hard drives too, the external hard drives, but I've, I've had bad luck. Um, and that's when I, I had my MacBook, did not have a PC anymore, and I learned about Brilliance and that it worked on Mac. And the other beautiful thing was that you can install it on as many computers or as many times as you need to. I had my, my 10-year-old Mac I did have to, I tried installing a new OS and it freaked out and I had to restore it back to normal, installed it again. There were times where my computer wasn't working good and I used my husband's computer. I installed it on there. I used my husband's computer for a little while and then I decided to, to spill a bottle of water on it so that I got a new computer, installed it on there. Never have I had to buy the program again. <laughs> That's all my computer troubles. But yeah, that's one of the reasons why I love Embrilliance. It works well, and I could, I've could i never had to buy it again. Um, all right. Oh, Cindy has a good question. Now this, this, this will take some thinking from me, and I don't think we can do this. Well, maybe. Okay. She has a good question. So I just put that sewing machine on top of that background quilting. The background quilting is still there. But what if you don't want the background quilting? I know within Brilliance, it can get removed from behind where the applique piece is and wherever any stitching is and it's called remove hidden stitches so anytime you layer something on something else the stitching on the bottom gets removed 
and whatever's on top is what gets stitched. So then you don't have all that bulkiness and all that density in one area. But if I'm thinking what you're really asking is, how do you make the background quilting fit nicely around a design so that it, it, uh, it kind of, what's the word I want to say, um, goes around it perfectly? That we can't do. That I think you need special software for. I know my Baby Lock Alliance can do it um, with the software that is on the machine itself. And I want to say Dime um, Designs and Machine Embroidery, they make a software specific for background quilting. But I haven't messed with any of that, so I can't help. Uh, do, do, do. All right, send. So, okay. Um, right. So uh, Lisa was saying just what I was saying. Um, the BE file won't, but the PE as well. Yeah, and it's called Remove Hidden Stitches. All right. Yeah, Norma says she has her and Brilliance installed on both her desktop and her laptop. Yay, okay. I think I've gotten through all the questions. So thank y'all so much for joining me tonight. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I don't have anything planned for the next one. I was on a roll this month. I was like, I was telling you exactly when it was. I was telling you what projects we were doing. Now I have nothing else planned. I do have questions though, because like we went through a lot of basic things tonight. We went through some embrilliance things tonight. Um, I always get worried about people that have been watching for a while that I don't want you to get bored and me do something that you've already seen me do before. But then I know we have a lot of new people coming on that want to know really basic things. So I was wondering, let me know in the comments of this video, whether you're watching live or you're watching the replay, if you would be interested in like a, some basic, um, like back to basics um, kind of sip and stitches where we talk on a specific topic like stabilizers or machines um, or um, threads or, you know, whatever, whatever you think something that you'd like to talk about, we can do in brilliance again, if you want, I've done a few in brilliance tutorials, but there's always room to do more because people will always ask some sort of question that maybe I hadn't addressed before. So let me know if you would like to see some sort of summer series like that. And I will try to start putting that together. Um, then what else I had? Oh, I was looking at the calendar. I, our next sip and stitch. So usually I do this every other Friday. We had an exception this month because of travel. Um, but our next sip and stitch will be Friday, June 10th. And I think I had on my ideas list to do something for Father's Day. So I will try to come up with something cute. Last year we did a koozie that went over really well with all the guys in our family. Um, I'll try to think of something else that would be good for, for dads uh, for Father's Day, and maybe we might step away from embroidery. Maybe we'll play with some sublimation um, or something instead. But try to do a Father's Day project on the 10th. And then June 24th, which is the other Friday in June, I think we're going to do like a 4th of July themed project. So I have to figure out what the projects are, but I know the things that I kind of want to do. <laughs> All right. Yay. Thank y'all so much. I'm glad you find this is helpful, Kim. I'm really glad. Um, all right, Cindy. So we have people that want some back to basic stuff and we have people that want more advanced stuff. So I'm here for all of it. I love it all. So we will try to get everybody something that helps them. Um, Ooh, Krissa, use a cutting machine for appliques. That's that's always a fun project that we need to do. Yes, let me write that down. All right. Okay, yay. All right, guys. Well, 
thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. Remember, if you have any questions, you can always email me at hello at carlybell.com. Um, come join the Facebook group. I have that link down below. Um, the, um, I have the CF Fans Membership Club if you want to come join us there and uh, do some more, um, more interactive uh, classes over Zoom. And then hopefully I will see. So I'll see y'all again June 10th. And then I'll see you for Hoop Fest. And then don't forget to tune in tomorrow at 11 for some Bella Box action. And we're going to unbox that and see all the goodies that are inside. Okay. Thank y'all so much. All right. Let me make sure I got it. Y'all have a great Memorial Day weekend. And hopefully the next time I see you, well, not tomorrow, but the next sip and stitch that I'll see you, we might have some progress on the new craft room and I can show you. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Y'all have a great weekend. I'll see you next time. Bye guys.